So today's file is a uh, document that was uh, taken off of malware.com and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Throwing the document into a hex editor we can see that it's a, actually an RTF document. So what we can do is open up uh, Office Mouse Scanner and scan it for any kind of OLE embedded objects. Here we can see that there actually is a OLE embedded object, so we can take a look at that. just to make sure we go ahead and scan it with Office Mouse Scanner itself uh, to see if there's any known vulnerabilities or uh, shellcode that can be derived from, from it. It doesn't look like there is. Here we just take the object and throw it into PE Studio just to get a quick overview of uh, any strings or uh, if it's been uploaded to VirusTotal already. Here we can see a URL and a HTA document that was inside of that OLE object. And here we throw the original document into PE Studio to see if anything is already known about it. And it looks like CVE 2017-0199 was identified. So here I just explain uh, what the CVE is doing. Um, essentially it's just uh, using type confusion within one of the links in the OLE object pointing to an HTA document that's out online that it will go out and fetch and put on the machine and run. So we go to the OLE object and retrieve the URL that we saw before and see if we can get that HTA file. And to do this we're using Mozilla. So we were able to get the HTA document and looking inside we can see quite a bit of legible text and a large chunk of Base64 data. can throw that in Notepad++ and use its built-in Base64 decoder to go ahead and unravel the data that we see. So here we see a bunch of null uh, characters and we can get rid of those by using control H and notepad plus plus and replacing all the nulls with uh, nothing. And That brings us down to ASCII characters and makes things a little more legible. And here we can see the same uh, top level domain and URL being used to download an additional file called mclean.exe.
So now we're going to download that additional file using Mozilla once again. So here we can see that the file is purporting to be CC Cleaner, but uh, based on the icon and um, its size and everything else, uh, that doesn't appear to be true. So again, throw again into PE Studio to get a quick overview. Uh, Virus Total doesn't really have anything. and it's pretty clean. The strings, looking through, um, see a few things, not too much. Again, CC Cleaner. But we can see a WScript shell, and uh, what looks to be some more Base64. So very similar to the last uh, last file using PowerShell to Base64 decode some commands and potentially download a file. Let's take a look. And here it is, more Base64 and PowerShell scripts. So I'll go ahead and decode this once again. And again, it's in Unicode, so go ahead and make it ASCII by removing all of the null characters. And again, we see the same URL downloading a third program, protected.exe. So we'll go ahead and repeat the same process as before and get that file. So here we see quite a quite a long trail of documents going from the original uh, RTF all the way down to protected.exe. It's quite a chain of events. And throwing the protected into P Studio, we get a quick overview. Um, a few hits, nothing specific. Um, but yeah, we'll see what else we can find. Looks like it is written in .NET. So here we look for any kind of legible strings that we can see. Kind of get an idea of what the file can do. Um, some HTTP things. Looks like some encryption stuff. Uh, sleep, start, console. Um, there is quite a bit of uh, references to crypt and decrypt type functions. Definitely some TCP activity, so networking capabilities. And again, just looking for interesting strings, especially in the Unicode variety down at the bottom.
and it looks like there's quite a bit of base 64 down at the bottom. That's um, that's quite a bit. Um, usually when it's that much, it, uh, it's an embedded file more than a command. Uh, so we may take a look at that later. That's a lot of base 64. So since this is a .NET executable, we can go ahead and decompile this in DNSPY to see what we can see. And right off the bat, we see a very odd file name. Um, a lot of Unicode characters, which is unusual. And then all of the additional forms and data within this file are basically messed up. <laughs> they have a lot of Unicode characters. Um, they're not legible. They're incomprehensible uh, as far as their layout and um, variable names, uh, function names, things of that nature. So it is heavily obfuscated. So here we're just going to poke around the file a little more, see if uh, there's anything legible or out of the ordinary. But uh, from what it looks like, it is uh, heavily obfuscated by some unknown program. You notice in a lot of these functions there's a lot of math uh, that could be deobfuscation routines for strings or um, anything else within the file to uh, uh, unobfuscate other functions and functionality. So here I'm just describing that the uh, base64 chunks we saw earlier, uh, due to all this obfuscation within this file, um, those themselves could have their own routines to further deobfuscate them after they're base64 decoded, or they could have custom base64 alphabet to decode them. And here we could uh, further run the file, uh, get some dynamic analysis out of it, uh, some behavioral analysis. Um, I believe it actually has anti-analysis techniques in it, so it doesn't fully run uh, to its full capability. But this is a, uh, while we can't really identify the file at the very end, the protected.exe, which is more than likely uh, protected by some kind of obfuscation or .NET packer of some sort. Uh, this is a good example of uh, document analysis of finding OLE objects embedded in documents, getting their uh, OLE object out, and identifying text that may be in there. In this case, the document was originally using the CVE 2017-0199 which is the uh, uh, link confusion uh, using HTA documents online. 
and from there it was able to download additional executables, uh, quite a few in fact, and those were all chained together to download one after the next, uh, ending up at this final protected.exe. And my guess, just based on the TCP and HTTP uh, functionality within the .NET file, uh, it may download additional functionality or serve as the final payload and act as a wrap, uh, perhaps ransomware since it was using uh, cryptography, or it could just have encrypted communications. And here we're just uh, noting some of the behavioral analysis that it did, uh, particularly launching regasm uh, from the .NET directory. Um, I believe I'll later analyze this to uh, conclude that it was launching regasm in a suspended state and injecting the base64 encoded chunks of data within regasm, which was, uh, I believe, just straight shellcode and then uh, continuing the regasm process so that is a, a form of uh, process injection or process hollowing to inject code and then that code is launched from regasm's uh, security context and helps get around a lot of security features within Windows. But that's all for this uh, analysis video ending it here but uh, again, this is a good uh, example of extracting OLE documents, analyzing them to get to their final payloads.